All right, let's take a look at the surfaces. So this is just all brushed down and painted. Got it all covered, both sides. And I just took out the upper A arm, so I gotta... <laughs> There's mush black mushrooms growing in here. These are really tasty, you guys. You cook these up with a little Wagyu steak. Um, delicious. Anyway, uh, let me show you a couple things. I did get the upper A arms yesterday in the in the mail from eBay. Uh, here's the original. Here's the tubular. Kind of similar. Let me show you something uh, over here. So this is where it mounts, right? So these two studs stay on the the frame, and there's your your uh, shock, your top shock mount, the spring pocket. And these, um, I took off and I had, they had these spacers, right? These shims in there. So these were all in the, in the back side and these are the, the forward side. And um, I'm just wondering if I need to keep these in. I, I realize that when the car gets in alignment that these, these could change, but I'm just wondering if I should put these back in now I guess I will with the uh, with the new unit. Um, I see some on this side. And there's a couple there. There's a couple here. So I'm assuming, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and put them back in. I mean, you can always take them out later. Let me show you the paint I used uh, for the chassis. I, I have a couple kinds of paint I use often. I really like the VHT stuff. So I use this a lot, um, rust and salt resistant. No primer needed. This is great stuff if you just need to paint a little black here and there. Um, I got the satin. And then this is what I just used. Uh, I think this is a little more durable maybe. They're very similar. But I bought some of this. Uh, got a case of it. Roll bar and chassis. Again, the satin black. Um, I'll just show you. Again, um, it just does a great job. I, I really like the stuff. I think it's pretty durable. I got up all in there, all here. Um, so that's pretty much what I use for the chassis stuff. Um, I did notice also, there's a little dent right there. Uh, how do I know it's a dent? It's not, there's not one over here. <laughs> So yeah, there's a little, uh, some stuff on the frame. I don't think it's anything that's gonna knock it out of alignment. Um, so that's the update, you guys. Uh, today's job, put the upper A, A arms in, maybe the lowers as well. I got the lowers over here. One of these days, we'll pull the old CB750 out and take a look at that. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna see if I can get these guys in. It's, we have rain tomorrow, so. All, all, all engines ahead, full steam ahead. All right, see you later. Okay, it is some time later, and I took off the upper A arms, and there was all kind of mess down in here, down in there. As you can imagine, that made a very nice little pocket or pouch for dirt. I found a tire uh, weight balancing, tire balancing weight in there. Not good. Um, but I cleaned it up. I painted it with the VHT, the same paint. So this is all clean now. Uh, the, the mushroom that was here, or the, you know, the bumper, uh, is not necessary because the new arms, where is it? Ha it has a bumper under there. So... I've got all my shims ready to go back in. Driver side, passenger side, front, back. Got those marked. I'm just gonna put them back in. Uh, and I wanna show you guys something pretty cool. And that is the, I believe they're 7 16 the nuts that came off of here. Uh, I still need to chase these down. They're pretty clean, but I did just spray some paint on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and oil that up and chase it down. Um, but this one's good too, that side. But check these nuts out. Look at my nuts. Check this out, you guys. How cool is that? Look at that. 
I just think that is badass. And I don't know why this one is not like these. One of these things is not like the others. But uh, I just, you know, I mean, I was watching some people actually from Global West. They have a video and they're like, well, we just threw some great eights on there because the old nuts were kind of messed up. But you cannot get, I don't think, I guess maybe with one of the catalog, like Paragon catalog or something, you could get these replicas. But isn't that cool? Look at that. I don't know. Call me old fashioned. And I realize that there's a little bit of irony because I'm saving these original nuts and, and I'm completely changing out the A arms and suspension. So I get it. Anyway, uh, I'm going to try to get these upper A arms just kind of waiting for the paint to dry. By the way, um, so I painted it. And then I hit it with a heat gun. And I, I highly recommend that you guys uh, get a little heat gun and just go over the stuff you paint with a heat gun. It, it really makes a difference, I think, in terms of the way the paint sets up and just the hardness of it and the dryness of it and all that. So that's just a little, well, I can't call it a pro tip because I'm not a pro. I'll call it an amateur tip. All right, check back with you soon. All righty, folks. Um, so upper A arms are in. I want to share a couple things I found out with you. So I did realize that these special, specially marked nuts are a type of lock nut. So when you put them on, you know, you have to exert some force and then there's no washer. So they are a lock nut. Um, so there's one issue, and this is a question for Global West probably, but I did notice on the passenger side, I want to show you the clearance. Um, let me take this off for a second. So um, the arm does move freely up and down here. And I want you to notice the clearance. It's pretty tight over here. Um, actually, on this side, for some reason, it's tight on both sides. Um, one thing I do like is the uh, ball joint here. You can change by unbolting it, really convenient. The other ones, the originals, you have to, you know, grind the, you have to grind it out and then you can put bolts in. Um, so that's where this is. Also notice where this comes down, pretty much right on, it's lined up like right there. Now I realize that these cars are not super scientifically put together, but let's go look at the other side and I wanna show you something. And then I have a question regarding the little spacers here. So on this side, you hear that? I'm getting some rubbing over here a little bit. And this side has more room. There's a gap here. So obviously this, this is forward, right? This, this whole thing is kind of forward. And also look where this comes down, right? So it's obviously more forward. Now, over to the spacers. So you would think the fix, and maybe it is, would be to remove these and or change the spacers back here. And this probably has to do with these A-arms being more precise than the originals. But the question is, so so that's that's what I would try, right? I'd remove a couple of these spacers. And, um, but here's my other question is, why do you need two sets of spacers? Wouldn't you just start at zero and then you just put spacers on one side, right? Why do you need, unless the whole thing has to be, you know, farther in, but I'm not sure that's the case. So I think I might loosen these, go with no spacers. Of course, I'm, I'm not going to be dealing with this actually because the first thing i'm going to do when this thing rolls out of here is get an alignment and get the transmission rebuilt because i'm not rebuilding transmissions yeah i could drop it out now but i don't have a lift and i don't want to deal with it right now and it works so anyway those are the first two things so it's going straight from here into a shop and you get all the stuff aligned double checked blah 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 but um my question about the spacers you know, why do you need two sets when all you're trying to do is really, you know, move the, I always forget, is that the toe? I think it's the toe. Also, um, just FYI, these come with, I think it was six degrees of camber, forward camber, 
which is, you know, giving you a little different alignment possibilities um, than the stock stuff. All right, that's it for now.